Okay, my friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University. As you know, we have a crew going on now that's getting worldwide and is starting to get some acceptance of the understanding of our true reality, which is part of our learning experience. And so the native cultures, the indigenous peoples that have lived on the same properties for thousands of years know the stories and since the age of enlightenment when we decided these guys they're crazy the stories they're telling are insane and literally they are <laughs> that's the that's the key they are literally insane but they are true I have verified these things and I show material evidence to support the things that these people are saying some of it yes it's crazy and it's not right I agree I, 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 I don't find it right, let me put it that way. But I'm going to tell you something right now. The things that are, are right are so insanely crazy that no person in their right mind would ever even start to consider them. That's why I am the one that started. <laughs> I, I see things that people don't see because I, I just see them. I don't know. Maybe I mean, I am crazy. I, don't, I, have, I have no idea. But... I'm telling you right now, the things I am seeing, crazy or not, they're true. Now, Scott Wilde sent me this, and these are the native indigenous peoples recounting their stories of what they were told. And this is, I'm just going to play it from, this is seven minutes, I'll, I'll try to remember to put a link to this on the video. and. Um, what Scott is going to do is go around the country and collect, well, let's see, I'm not sure he's going to do this. We don't have any resources. We, we're, we're just doing this to try to understand, let me put it that way. And, you know, we, we want others to understand along with us. So I'll try to put it in videos. I don't know what we're going to do, but we're, he's going to try to collect up the Native American stories of guys like this. We're getting older. I'm old. This guy's getting older. You know, at, at a point it's going to be gone because we have been indoctrinated into a new unreal reality. I know it's not, not real. I have absolutely no question whatsoever it's not real. And nobody seems to care uh, that is the ones that is teaching us what reality is about. These are the people that care. Now, I'm going to play this and listen. Whoops. Here we go, hold on. We become an emotional being for the very first time with that first cry. Let me, let me just mention something. This is about the four worlds that we go through. And we are right now in the third world of living three-dimensional yellow world. And I believe he has, a, well, he does explain it in the video here. I don't know if he'll explain it during the clip I'm going to show, but here it goes. That first cry is sort of over here on the side of fear or the discomfort. And then of course as we let out that cry, somebody picked us up, rocked us, fed us, cleaned us, made us comfortable. And we become a thinking being for the very first time, we are told. And then of course as we begin to use that ability to think, we become aware of our physical environment and our physical self. And so we are told we are four beings in one. We arrive as a spirit being. We become an emotional being, a thinking being, and then finally a physical being. So we are four beings in one. And then the teachings are that as a being with four sacred areas, of us, that we are to continually grow in those four areas of our being, in this the third world, in the yellow world. So everything is based on the sacred number four for us so that we can learn how to live in the next world, which is the fourth world. It is that we must grow continually spiritually, that we must grow continually emotionally, that we must grow continually mentally, and that we must grow continually greater aware of our physical environment and our physical self. And so, uh, I just want to make a statement now. Those things that he just mentioned are, are literally 
don't seem to be important anymore. It, the materialistic world says that everything that you do, well, this is my interpretation of it. I, this is where I start to become a preacher, and I don't mean to do that. I really don't. All I can tell you is that my feeling about my prior existence, I'm going to tell you, because it was prior, I, I've changed everything. My whole life has changed since mud falls. And realizing what really does exist in the material realm. And um, it took me a hell of a long time. I was 60 years old or so before I realized truly what the meaning, of, truly what was before us. I don't have the meaning of it. Don't get me wrong. I can't tell you the meaning of it. I could tell you that they, the things they had written and the things that these guys understand were real. Now, they, under, have, they, they have understanding of these things. I don't have the understanding. I know the material evidence. But I have no idea about the things he's talking about. This is what I want to learn. What do these things mean? What, like he's saying, we have to grow. We have to learn. We have to... And, and I, that's almost like exactly like the Gnostic. I'm trying to learn everything I can learn right now while I'm still breathing oxygen because sooner or later it's case closed. And then it sounds like you are basically judged on how you almost like you get a grade, a report card. You know, what did you do during your life? Oh, man, I partied my ass off. <laughs> oh, man, I, you know, well, I did. <laughs> but I finally realized that that was not really the key to the gate to uh, where the gate I wanted to go to. Anyway, let's listen to this guy. He's This is fabulous stuff, and I hope Scott does this. And I have a branch. John Slutton is down in... Uh, in the um, Amazon jungle, and he has a branch of, he's with the Shipibo, um indigenous people down there, and they really embrace mud fossils. He's opened up a branch of mud fossil university down there, and they are very receptive because they understand, just like he understands. These people understand. We, but now you tell the truth. Now you just literally they spit on you. I mean, I have lost everybody that I have ever. I lost everything. And you will too if you start to tell the truth and stand by yourself and, and stand be up to it because um, they'll walk away. And they say, you know, what can you do? You can't make everybody listen. And if they, you know, it, and if I'm presenting evidence, I don't present something that is just saying, oh, you're going to have to listen to me. It was some thousand years ago. They said this and they said this. No, no. I'm showing you this. That's a lung. I'm sorry. It's a lung. And I'm showing you this and saying, that's a goose head. Or some kind of waterfowl or some kind of fowl. Now, they don't agree with it. They won't allow this stuff to be shown because I can show there's giant humans were here. And there was dragons here. And it was all the things that these kind of people talk about. At an early age, we are taught this thing. There are ceremonies that are performed for a young woman, when a young girl, when she becomes a woman that lasts for four days. The first day is the spiritual teaching involved and received from the elder women. And the second... This is so profound. This, this is, you know, this is conveying a way of life. This is very, very emotional. Today is the teachings of the emotional self, also received from the elder women and other relatives that might even be including the male relatives. And then the third day would be the teachings of the need to learn and to gain knowledge all of the various things of a person and individual's environment. And then finally, of course, to be aware of your physical self and how you conduct yourself in the eyes of your relatives and, and in the outside world. Honor. Totally lost. 